Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this pre press conference from the 47th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum here in Davos. Welcome, everybody here in the room. Welcome for those of you who are watching on the live stream, and a special welcome to everyone here on the panel. Um, um, the press conference today is dedicated to the launch of CEPI. So you know the forum has its acronyms. Uh, what does CEPI stand for? CEPI is the Coalition of Academic Preparedness Innovations. Um, what does that mean? You'll hear that in a second from the wonderful panel we have assembled here today. But first, uh, let me introduce them to you. To my immediate left, we are joined uh, by the Chief Executive Officer of CEPI. I'll try to pronounce it uh, correctly. John Arne Rottingen. Very good. I think it was close. Um, next to him, Carlos Muedas, who is the uh, EU Commissioner for Research, Science and Innovation. Um, right at the center of our panel today is, uh, we're joined by Julie Louise Geberding, the Executive Vice President for Strategic Communications, Global Public Policy and Population Health of MSD. Um, to her immediate left, we uh, have the pleasure to be joined by Naoko Yamamoto, the Assistant Minister for Global Health and Health Industry Strategy at the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare of Japan. And last but not least, we're joined uh, by my fellow German uh, State Secretary uh, Georg Schütte um, <laughs> of the Federal Ministry of Education and Research. It, re it really pains me that of all names I got the German name wrong, so uh, apologies for that, uh, Mr. Schütte. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, without further ado, um, John Arne, over to you. Um, what is the aim of SAPI and why is it so important uh, for everyone? No, thank you. So. As you said, CEPI is a new global coalition and the aim is really to develop new vaccines to have a safer world, to prevent and pre prepare us for epidemics. And this kind of planning uh, started here at the Davos last year at the World Economic Forum, where a group uh, of representatives, both from public and private sector, from international organizations, from governments, from civil society, came together really after seeing the devastating impact of the Ebola epidemic. Because two and a half a year ago, um, many of us were at the World Health Organization uh, really seeing the, what has happened in West Africa and seeing the increase in the epidemic, hearing new numbers, more cases every week, um, and also having kind of predictions of this epidemic coming con completely out of control. Um, what then was the focus was really how could we mobilize vaccines um, uh, in short time. And actually, one of the successes as the part of the global response, because of there were many failures, but one of the successes was that the world collectively, in collaboration between private and public sector, managed to start and implement uh, more than 15 clinical trials. Uh, and one of those trials, uh, the Guinea ring vaccination trial, uh, done by using the Merck mm -hmm. vaccine, um, really demonstrated efficacy. Um, however, if we had been prepared, if we had taken these vaccines through phase one and phase two clinical development earlier, we would have been able to take those vaccines out in the field maybe six, nine months earlier than we did. And that would have meant huge impact on human lives. We would have saved thousands of human lives in West Africa. We would have avoided the social disaster as such an epidemic can have, and of course the security and economic impacts. So that is really what CEPI is about. And we have two strategic pillars. We, we want to do two things. One is based on guidance from the World Health Organization to prioritize vaccine development for threats that we have defined and we have said these are the most important threats. Uh, and CEPI has decided to focus on MERS, the, mes the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, um, Nipah virus and Lassa fever as the three priorities. But that's one approach. We also know that we do not necessarily have prediction power to actually say what would be the next epidemic. Um, so we also need to prepare for the unknown and we need to have rapid response capabilities we need to have adaptable vaccine technology platforms where we can more or less plug and play, where we can take new information on a new epidemic, the new pathogen, and actually put it into a, an established vaccine. So what CEP is really is it's a kind of a virtual vaccine development organization. It's also a global health insurance organization. 
we all know that individuals need, need health insurance to be protected, to actually have health care. Uh, but this is a global health insurance mechanism for countries. Countries need to come together. CEPI has been created by a group of founding partners. World Economic Forum was crucial, as I mentioned, starting here in a meeting last year. And then it's the two governments, the governments of India and Norway, with two foundations, Gates Foundation and the Wellcome <laughs> Trust. But that's just the start. And I'm very grateful for the governments who have already stepped up and now are announcing their contribution and away, paying their premiums to CEPI. I'm also very, very clear on the message that we can only do this as a partnership. We can only do this as a coalition. We need to collaborate public and private sector. So therefore, I'm also glad that uh, Julie Gerberding from Merck is here on the panel and demonstrate how we, through this model, can work collectively in a different way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Moedas, you're an EU commissioner, so you know working together across boundaries can be a challenge. Tell us why this is important for, from a European perspective and what the role of the commission will be. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's a pleasure because I think that when you think about epidemics, you think about the fact that whatever you do, you have to be uh, globally prepared. And like so many of the challenges that we have today in different crises in Europe, the answer is a global answer. And uh, those solutions have to be global and have to be a work uh, together of different countries. So CEPI for me is more than just an organization, is more than health, is actually part of this view of the world, a collaborative open world. A world where problems are met with uh, global responses. And so one of the things that uh, we are very proud at the European Commission is that we were able from the very, very beginning when I started in 2014, at the end of 2014, to have had the ability with the private sector to deploy more than 200 million to uh, basically look into a vaccine for Ebola. And at the time, nobody believed that the Commission and the European Union could do it. And that span of time, just two months, uh, deployed that amount of money. And then we did it again on a, on a different scale with Zika, with 45 million euros. And we are doing it again and again. So for me, it's also important to be here today to show that the European member states, the European project can be <coughs> flexible and can answer very quickly to uh, these global problems. And today we have several, uh, really, people around the table that I respect very much because I think that um, when I look at a company like Merck or other companies like Johnson & Johnson that work with us on the vaccine, uh, they are making that effort to participate in this endeavor that has to be public and private. So one of the things that we are committing uh, from this moment is basically to, first of all, include all our work on Ebola in the CEPI, and that will mean around more 50 million euros. So that's what we're planning immediately to do. But secondly, uh, I will propose myself to the member states around the table to include uh, an additional uh, 200 million euros for the future that will add up to uh, the circa 400 million that we are announcing today until 2020. So that's a, a commitment of the Commission to uh, actually talk and propose to all member states. And uh, with that, I think that we are getting here to a firepower uh, that will make the difference. So in conclusion, I think that uh, we uh, learned in the recent uh, past that it's worthwhile to be prepared before an epidemic arises. We learned that it's possible to be prepared and we learned that we can do more to help than actually just being prepared. We have to have action and immediate action. And this is why CEPI uh, comes in, is in this point, action and immediate action. So CEPI was created to respond to these lessons and the European Commission is very proud to join this effort. So thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Julie, it's been already hinted at by, by John Arna how important it is to have the private sector on board. So um, why are you joining? Uh, what's your role? Well, I'm very pleased to represent MSD, known in North America as Merck, 
as a member of the CEPI board, but I do also represent five other multinational companies that are involved in vaccine manufacturing, including Pfizer, GSK, uh, Takeda, uh, Sanofi, and um, did I forget anyone? No. Um, we operate as a coalition of multinationals in this context because we understood from the experience in the Ebola outbreak that when a crisis occurs or when large-scale capacity is necessary, it really does take a multinational company with experience, capacity, and commitment to be able to step up to the plate and get the job done. If you go back and think about the Ebola outbreak in Western Africa and the horror of the individual people and families who suffered such fear and, and in many cases loss, the health workers, the disruption in the government, to the economies and really on a global basis uh, to the whole global health security front line. And then imagine what it would have been like if there had been a vaccine ready to deploy in that very same situation. We would have completely abrogated what was a nightmare for so many people for so long. And that's really the problem that CEPI is designed to prevent. But by working together now to do the advance work on vaccine development, we'll have things in our hands, ready to roll when we need them, when the next outbreak comes along. And as we've already said, we can't predict what the next outbreak would be, but we in the manufacturing world know um, how to get these things move quickly. We're hoping that through the CEPI mechanism, we can do much of the pre-work in the regulatory environment, even up to the point of being able to stockpile um, precursors of the advanced vaccines. But more importantly, we will learn as we go. And by developing new and innovative platforms or new and innovative strategies, we may be able to more quickly flex from the vaccines that we have identified as our priorities to whatever vaccine we need um, when such a situation emerges. CEPI is off to a great start. The commitments that were made this week are important on a global basis to people in every nation, but they're not enough. And so we look forward to additional partnerships and additional commitments so that we can really get this job done right. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. And uh, speaking of additional uh, commitments, we've heard that India and Norway uh, were founding partners and, and are supporting SAPI, but the, the presence of representatives of Japan and Germany gives away that we have something good to announce here. Yamamoto-san, uh, you're representing Japan. If you could yeah. share the Japanese perspective, please. Okay, thank you, and uh, good morning, everybody. It's my great pleasure to be here with you, and uh, why Japan is going to support the CEPI? Because we believe the CEPI will contribute to achieving the pandemic preparedness and universal health coverage in the world. And as uh, Joanne, the jury said, that the Ebola outbreak exposed the fundamental fragility of in global health architecture that uh, um, dangers human security. In, in the Lancet, December 2015, Prime Minister Abe, our Prime Minister, stated clearly that the construction of a global health architecture that can respond to public health crisis is one of the Japan's priority. Through the G7 presidency in 2016, um, at the G7 Isashima Summit or G7 Kobe Health Ministers meeting, uh, in particular, Japan has highlighted the importance pandemic preparedness and UHC. So access to the essential tools like a vaccine is a uh, most in indispensable, the most, most important component for the, these objectives. But however, as everybody has already said, that the development of a new vaccine often stagnated by market failure. And uh, we think that a single country cannot <coughs> able to solve the pro this problem and we need a global mechanism to provide incentive for developers and ensure access to them. So that's why Japan decided to join the CEPI. We're very happy to do that. Unfortunately, our minister Shiozaki, he, he cannot join this press conference. So on behalf of him, I would like to announce Japan's commitment to CEPI, technically and uh, uh, scientifically, but in addition, financially, we will contribute 25 million U.S. dollars a year, which is equi equi equivalent to 125 million in the five years. We are very happy to work with all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for your leadership on this. 
Um, State Secretary Schütte, um, you're the last speaker on the panel, but your country is one of the first that, to chip in. Please share uh, Germany's commitment and uh, why you think this is important. Uh, global health figures highly on the German political agenda. Um, Naoko mentioned the G7 summit in Japan. We had the G7 presidency prior to that, and it was wonderful to see how we could build up momentum. Carlos was there as well. How we could build up momentum from Berlin to uh, then uh, Japan, from Germany to Japan, and now to the upcoming G7 uh, summit in Italy to focus, amongst others, on global health. The G20 summit uh, this year in Germany as well will uh, pick up the, the challenge of global health with a pandemic preparedness action exercise, uh, amongst others. And it is fairly clear that we have to join forces within a government, with interdepartmental cooperation. Our Minister of Health is here talking about antimicrobial resistance. I am here to talk about uh, Ebola and pandemics. And the uh, German Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development um, puts a focus on the strengthening of health systems in quite a number of countries. It's important to join forces internationally. We are happy to join forces with the European Commission in the European De uh, uh, Union Development Countries Clinical Trials Partnership, EDCTP is the acronym, and CEPI seems seem to us to be one of the uh, very straightforward initiatives to join forces to address a concrete issue and to bring all the strength of the various countries into an arena where we can make a difference. And this is why we joined CEPI. We will, we, on a very short notice, last year when we had budget negotiations, we um, made it possible to chip in 10 million euro this year, and we will scale it up to 20 million euro annually starting next year. So there is a major commitment which will uh, uh, sum up over time close to 100 million, and at the same time, as a sort of in-kind contribution, we do have a German network on research laboratories focusing on infectious diseases, and they are ready to join forces with international colleagues to work together. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Um, probably some of the most successful projects that were launched in Davos are Gavi and the Global Fund, and we, we surely hope that CEPI can uh, can, can match that or even surpass. Um, but let's, let's hear from you. Let's say uh, you mentioned a lot of meetings before a lot of work went into this. Let's imagine we meet here again next year or in two years. What's your hope for SAPI? What, what, what would you be your ideal scenario for when we come back in one year? That's to me. I, we, we, sh we should understand, of course, that vaccine development is, is not something we can do tomorrow uh, and get results the day after. Um, uh, and that's really why there is a uh, uh, kind of lack of market in, in incentives, because we really do not know when these vaccines are needed, where they are needed, uh, which pathogens, and all of that. So my expectation is that we still will come a long way in, in two years. Uh, we have issued today our first call for proposals on the specific vaccine targets. Then we will later issue a call on the, the vaccine technology platforms. So it means that we will have clear, strong programs up and running, um, and they will already then have achieved some results, I believe. So I think we will expect to see results from the first uh, phases of clinical trials on these vaccines in two years. And that is important. And, but in addition, we will have a system, and I think that is really important, and I, I really appreciate the words of Commissioner Moedas saying that this is not only kind of the, the specific efforts, it's actually the collective kind of view uh, 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 behind an organization like this, because we need to collaborate systematically across regulatory agencies. We need to collaborate on understanding how we do clinical trials, how we kind of mobilize action in the field and all of that. And, and I think to have CEPI also as a platform for those wider dialogues across regulators is important. Thank you very much.
Could um, I just add one thing? Because I, I think one of the concerns that I and my colleagues in, in the other um, large multinational manufacturing, and I should have mentioned Johnson & Johnson as the sixth organization in that category, um, we are very familiar with the timeline for creating a vaccine. So we have the opportunity now for a strong start in developing these three priority vaccines. But please understand that we are not going to have a vaccine next year or in two years. Uh, three companies, Merck, GSK, and J&J, &J, have been working on an Ebola vaccine, and while we have made substantial progress in understanding the efficacy, for example, the Merck vaccine is looking very promising, none of these vaccines have made it through the regulatory process. So even when you have something that's gone through clinical trials, it takes a long time to get an approved vaccine. So please understand that the commitment needs to be made now, and this is a very long journey. Um, if something has occurs tomorrow, such as an outbreak, don't expect that CEPI will be able to respond immediately, but we're going to be a lot more prepared to respond by working together in anticipation of what will be predictable surprises than if we do nothing in the interim. Mm -hmm. So we are in a difficult situation of being committed, but we don't want to overpromise on the timeline. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Julie. Let me follow up on that. If you talk, so you mentioned the, the six companies that are already involved. If you talk to fellow senior executives here in Davos from, from other sectors, do you have the feeling that the sense of urgency that's, that's clearly present among this group um, is also uh, has moved on to, to other industries, other sectors? I really don't. I, I think perhaps the people who are experiencing the impact of Zika virus right now have a heightened sense of urgency and a familiarity with the concept of what it means to have an emerging infectious disease literally in your backyard. But inevitably, and I've been doing this for a long time, I've been through anthrax, SARS, monkeypox, avian influenza, and so forth. Um, when the threat subsides, the attention um, of even the political leadership subsides as quickly as the infectious agent does. So it's really up to us, the people who know and have the responsibility to maintain <coughs> that sense of urgency. And we need your help in the media to advocate and create the awareness and the ongoing interest in the concept of global emerging health threats and global health security. Because that's really what this foundationally is. This is another big piece of global health security for people not just in developed countries, but for people everywhere in the <coughs> world who are vulnerable. I think I, uh, just one word. I, I think that is uh, really where super national organizations uh, have a role because uh, we plan uh, longer term. Uh, we have longer tenures uh, as politicians, and uh, even if we are politicians, we are on the long term and on the long run. And uh, Horizon 2020, our research program has been that. So, SEPI, I think that the results will be in how many concrete projects will we have? Will people look at SEPI as uh, an organization that is prepared? Even in it is a long-term effort, but we have to be prepared and we have to accelerate that preparation, even if it takes years, but we are the accelerator. And we have to show people the results of these projects, and even if we are going step by step, I think that today you need to inform people. You need to tell them, what have you done? You have to explain the scientific process. You live in a world where people are putting in doubt uh, experts in scientific processes because they don't know what's science and they don't know what's the process. And so I see also SEPI as an educator of what's the process, the things that Julie was saying that people don't know in general. They think you can do it from uh, in six months or one year. Uh, and so it's also to explain and communicate will be very important uh, for, for SEPI. Thank you. Georg, I think you want to add to that. Yes, it, it's right to caution expectations or to manage expectations because there are so many uh, actors involved. It's basic research, it's proof of concept, then it's clinical trials, then it is the regulatory agencies, then, is, then it is all the logistics to, of bringing the vaccines to the people who need it. And yet a coalition as CEPI, uh, like CEPI, can... Uh, um, um, help to overcome the hurdles, can help to speed up the process, and I would like to echo Carlos, this is a unique opportunity to do this. If we join forces internationally, then we will be much faster than during the last crisis. We, be, we will not be there immediately, but hopefully faster than in the past. Thank you very much. Let's see if we have uh, any questions on the floor. 
Can I get a sense? I think we have answered all the questions already. So uh, let me let me ask one question then that came in over social media. Somebody asked, uh, what will the role of technology be here? And uh, some of you already hinted to that, but maybe um, I have a volunteer or two to, to elaborate. Well, let me just say that vaccine development and manufacturing is technology. <laughs> so there will be a big role for technology. But we're also very optimistic that this process of funding these RFPs will incentivize even the smallest um, academic or biotech company to step up and try new and innovative things. What we'd love to find is the platform that allows us to create new vaccines much faster than the traditional mechanism. So this is an opportunity to engage the brightest minds in creating new vaccine approaches, new vaccine adjuvants, new, new technologies for both um, antigen development, but also manufacturing and deployment, and even regulatory innovation. But uh, at, at the very heart, this is all about technology and bringing the best that science now has available to apply to an area of science where the market doesn't work to promote the innovation. Japan, Germany, oh, you yes. want to, to add to that? Yes, um, oh, Jerry has already uh, said that what I want to say. But the, in addition, I think the, the CEPI is a wonderful platform to the researchers get together and inspire each other and run each other. So maybe the, it's a good uh, opportunity to overcome. And also, the, uh, like my country and uh, our prime minister and minister committed that, that CEPI initiative, it's a good, uh, uh, it's a very wonderful to give the young researchers to think about vaccine development and to join this area for the future. So. And if we talk about research, health research is high-tech research today, so technology is deeply involved and affected. Thank you very much. Mindful of the full schedules of our panelists and that we are reached the end of this press conference, thank you very much for joining uh, this press conference on the launch of CEPI, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. Thank you very much.